a dog was very fond of a bone and it had buried the bone once in a while it would dig out the bone a dry bone and it would chew the bone and when it chewed the bone its gum would get cut by the sharp edges of the bone and little blood would flow and it would taste its own blood and think that it's such a tasty bone you know and then you will uh, bury that bone again and go off and once in a while it will come back and do that now we find that funny but according to vedanta that's all that we are doing that's all that we are doing when we are searching for happiness the happiness which is your own self the the ananda swarupa the atman that happiness we try to experience it in our own minds with the help of external objects what is the role that the external object plays we have desires so i have desires desires are like waves in the mind which come and because of these waves in the mind what happens is my happiness is obscured but um, when i get the object i want an ice cream so the moment i i i get the ice cream what happens is then these waves are these uh, waves are wiped out and and in the mind again i get the happiness which is my true nature so the idea is i have desire for an ice cream for example and when the desire arises in the mind the natural happiness of the self the ananda swarupa which is reflected in the mind that gets obscured and i struggle to get that ice cream i go and purchase that ice cream i get some joy at seeing the ice cream i get joy in holding the ice cream and i get a sense of joy in licking and tasting and eating that ice cream as a result of that and uh, as a, re- a result of getting that ice cream and enjoying that ice cream the waves in the mind which of desire which were there they subside and the natural ananda of the self shines forth again in the mind and the mistake i make is just like the dog the bone gives me happiness no i feel the ice cream gives me happiness no it is my own self which is reflected in the mind which is giving me happiness so it is not the object outside vedanta tells you it's not the object outside and we are making a mistake when we say the the object outside gives me happiness there is a whole section in one of our ancient upanishads called the taittiriya upanishad those of you are interested you can look it up in the taittiriya upanishad chapter 2 and i think section 8 probably ashtama anuvaka there is a whole section which is called ananda mimamsa ananda mimamsa literally means investigation of happiness the subject which i have chosen f- for this lecture the meaning of ananda mimamsa is exactly that investigation of ananda investigation of happiness and there you know something very interesting happens they say let's consider happiness and what they do is when you investigate something in a scientific way what do you do you first you measure you start measuring so let's measure happiness in modern economists have been trying to do that with their uh, utility curves and so on and so forth thousands of years ago these people who um, did ananda mimamsa and the taittiriya upanishad they said let's measure happiness and to measure anything you need a unit so let's have one you let's say what will be one unit of happiness and they said what could be the maximum possible happiness a human being can have a person can wish for in the world and they say that first of all first condition you are sad has to be young i'm sorry for all old people and i'm also in that group but you are still in that category so you are sad unfortunately this is a fact that youth is a factor in happiness so you are sad first of all it must be young and he says adhyayaka must be learned must be in iit so that you will fulfill the second condition also <laughs> so adhyayaka and he say say that sadhu syat sadhu in the sense must be a good person you look at the understanding a person who is evil person who is mischievous actually cannot be happy so person who is young very learned and good has noble intentions and what else health is required ashishta dhrishta balishta must be strong 
uh, must be capable must be capable of enjoying his mind and body and sense organs must be capable of enjoying the world um you want uh, idli and uh, dosa and ice cream you must be capable of digesting it you can't end up with um, you know a runny stomach within a couple of hours so you should be able to fire away at random whatever good food comes ashishta dridishta balishta that's the commentator say able to enjoy a lot such a person and and uh not enough one more thing is required he says tasya prithivi iyam prithivi vittasya purna syat let the entire world the wealth of the world be at the disposal of this young person you will get the wealth of the world but the thing is you have to work 30 or 40 years and by the time you get it you are no longer young <laughs> so at the very beginning if you get all that highly educated young extremely well built and strong and energetic and with all the wealth of the world at his or her disposal sounds nice and the title of upanishad says this is ek manushanand let this be one unit of happiness let this be one unit of happiness and then they say is is anything more possible we can't think of anything more they say they are very interesting way of looking at it they say that for enjoying life you need three things you need a uh, sharira body vishaya object of enjoyment and loka environment you need a good body a physical uh, physically good mentally sensitive well trained you need good things to enjoy uh, good good uh, you know uh, very nice ice cream should be there and not only that the environment counts the, the ice cream served in the on the roadside and the ice cream served in a five star hotel that's what that's why they charge you 20 times more in a five star hotel because they are actually providing a loka an environment which is superior to your uh, loka outside so all three together are necessary for enjoyment and the taittiriya upanishad says at that point we have conceptions of higher lokas so after this human birth you can go to their different lokas gandharva loka uh, deva loka and so on and so forth many worlds they talk about you may or may not believe in all that but the point they want to make is you get better bodies better vishayas and better bodies better vishayas and better lokas and your enjoyment increases they say that when you go to gandharva loka 100 times shatam manushananda 100 times of what you get as the, as the one unit of human happiness you can get that and so on now the point they make is there are these two tracks one track is track 1 and then there is track 2 one track is where you get that one manu manushananda this is manushananda and when you go to a higher loka that's after death is always post mortem so you get 100 times of that and you can go to even higher lokas as you go on 100 times of that keeps on increasing and finally the highest they can think of is they they say brahma the highest deity they can conceive of i calculated actually if you keep on multiplying by 100 times i come to the the final figure i got was 10 to the power 20 10 to the power 20 of what this one manushananda which is in, which is incredible by any any standards so 10 to the power 20 of that you can aspire for for with better bodies better vishayas and better lokas and now the point is this what we saw a little earlier you see some wise person said instead of looking for better ice creams and better bodies and better lokas if ananda is it's my own ananda i myself i'm shining in the mind and that's the joy i'm experiencing why do i need this external paraphernalia if i give up the problem is the desire for that desire for the ice cream which is obstructing my ananda now instead of working for that ice cream why don't i let go of the desire which is in the mind if i let go of that desire i don't need that ice cream automatically the ananda should theoretically manifest itself in my mind and so they say there is this second track track 2 they say a person who is shrotriya this is a technical term for a person who is convinced of the vedantic truth that i am not the body i am not the mind i am consciousness existence bliss 
you know, in Shankaracharya's famous hymn where he says, Chidananda Rupa Shivoham. But remember how he starts off. He starts off by saying, Mano Buddhyahankara Chittani Naham. I am not the mind, I am not the physical body, I am certainly not the ice cream outside, and I am the witness consciousness behind this body and mind. So this person, on the basis of this Vedantic truth, what he is, is Akamahata. He gives up. Akamahata means not literally, not destroyed by desire. Uh, so not uh, limited by desire. This person gives up the desire for the ice cream or whatever. And the promise is he will get, he or she will get the same ananda here. And not only that, he says in this very human life, you don't have to die and go to higher locus to get that ananda. And depending on your commitment to Vedanta and giving up the desires, you can get the same ananda even up to 10 to the power 20 in this very life. The Vedantic promise is, if you have a clear conviction of the Vedantic truth that I am not the body and mind, I am Ananda Swarupa. <coughs> and I let go of this external desires which I am trying to get for getting Ananda in my mind. If I let go of that, that Ananda will manifest itself to the extent that I can let go of this. Shankaracharya in his commentary says, the variable factor is this. Vedantic conviction is a fixed factor and this factor is we call it X and Y. X is fixed and Y keeps on varying. The more you are akamahata, the more you let go of petty desires in the world, the more joy you get. This is the track two. The track one is the person who tries to get pleasure in the world or in the next world and gets, gets happiness. They admit it. You do get happiness. But that all the problems associated with it are there. It will be transient. It will be habit forming. It will lead to satiety. Uh, it, you will want more and more of it and it goes on and on whereas this one is is lasting it's more satisfying and it's a kind of pure joy which wells up from the, from the spirit within this is the difference you know I'll do something here which is not strictly Vedantic not strictly positive psychology also um, a few years ago, I had uh, a chance to listen to a lecture on string theory. I was in the university, so this professor had come, he was giving a talk on string theory, and I was the only non-PhD in the room. So when the chai wala entered with uh, chai cups, I felt uh, a kind of brotherhood, you know, so everybody else is a PhD. And that was the only lecture where I did not understand the whole life, I never attended such a lecture. You know, the, in the first sentence itself, I did not understand. So later I was telling one Swami who is... Uh, a mathematician, he got the Bhatnagar Award last year. Uh, brilliant Swami. I said that, Swamiji, this, I couldn't understand a single word of this lecture. Then he told me that it is well known in research circles that every lecture has four parts. First part is the research student understands, his guide understands, audience also, specialized audience, they understand. The second part of the lecture, the student understands and the guide understands, but the audience doesn't understand what he's talking about. Third part of the lecture, the guide doesn't understand, the student only understands. And the last part of the lecture, student also does not understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so, now, I am going to do a little bit of that last part of the lecture, is that how do we relate that engagement, meaning and pleasure to this idea, you know, that the second track, track two, uh, Shrotri and Akamahata.